Thank you so much. And joining us now to talk more about Speaker Pelosi's potential trip to Taiwan, founder and executive director of the National Security Institute, Jamil Jaffer. Jamil, it's so great to see you. Thanks for having me, Natasha. Jamil, I did not think that come Sunday we would still be talking about this, that it would still be up in the air about Speaker Pelosi going to Taiwan. At this point, doesn't she have to go? Well, Natasha, it seems hard to manage her not going at this point. If she doesn't go, uh, we do run the risk, as the Democratic congressman you all interviewed uh, just said, uh, you know, that that it will be viewed as us cowing or caving in uh, to Chinese pressure. So at this point, having said repeatedly that she's going to go, having pushed back on the White House's pushback on her to not go, I think it's very hard for her to back off at this point, Natasha. Well, and Beijing has said all kinds of things about her potential trip to Taiwan, warning about a, quote, forceful response. What would that realistically look like at this point? And is it still all just bluster? You know, in a lot of ways, part of it's got to be bluster, right? The idea of the Chinese military uh, shooting down American warplanes flying alongside uh, Nancy Pelosi's, uh, uh, you know, plane or shooting down her plane, I mean, are, are nearly impossible. I mean, those will obviously be an act of war. I don't think we can expect that. Might they respond militarily against Taiwan, you know, in some sort of limited way? That's certainly a possibility. We've already seen them conducting live fire exercises there, uh, as, your, as your correspondent just noted in the Taiwan Straits uh, just in the last 24, 48 hours. So we know that they're willing to threaten military action, whether they'll actually take it against Taiwan versus against us. I think that's that yet remains to be seen. Well, if she does go, do you have any insight into how well Speaker Pelosi might be protected? Well, you know, the, the U.S. government has made clear that they intend to protect her if she, in fact, goes. Uh, that's their responsibility. They will do that. Um, you know, whether they'll have warplanes fighting, fire, you know, flying alongside her, uh, she'll obviously have a security detail alongside her, which is why uh, it's been it has been part of her clear her direct agenda as to when she's going to go and when she's going to arrive on the ground. But she'll have a strong set of people around her, or, you know, strong protection around her. The question becomes, though, what happens if the Chinese decide to fly a fighter just to just come alongside, right? Threaten action, don't actually take action, right? Would the U.S. warplanes be willing to be forced down uh, onto other territory? That's a really hard question and one that's, you know, unknown at this point, but it'd be very provocative. They're saying, of course, it's provocative for us to send Nancy Pelosi there at all. Well, meanwhile, you know, we are tracking in the background the likelihood of if and when China may decide to invade Taiwan, maybe even on a shorter timeline before the end of Biden's first term. I know we've spoken about this before. How do you think this whole back and forth has affected that likelihood or possibility? Well, you know, Natasha, it's hard to really know exactly how it's affected it because what the Chinese have perceived, uh, not just during the Biden administration, but also in pri the prior two administrations, they've perceived America as lacking the willpower to defend Taiwan, right? They're not convinced that we would actually go to war if, in fact, they were to invade Taiwan. And what they watched, as we discussed previously, you know, the withdrawal from Afghanistan and the like, that's only emboldened them, our, our limited reaction uh, to Ukraine. That's only emboldened them. So now, with Nancy Pelosi going, they can claim, well, the U.S. is taking provocative action. Now is the time for us to get involved and make clear to the world and to the United States that Taiwan is, in fact, part of China. So they may actually view this as an opportunity to take action while still believing that the U.S. won't actually respond if they come across the Taiwan Straits. And, you know, truth be told, it's hard to really assess whether, in fact, we would, because as we saw when President Biden himself said that we would defend Taiwan, the White House staff immediately walked that back within 24 hours of him making that statement. Jamil Jaffer, you know, hindsight, of course, is 2020. What should we have done from the very beginning of this situation? If we could, if we could rewind the back and forth and the endless speculation and the, the veiled threats, these not so veiled threats, what should we have done? Well, Natasha, I think it's clear. We should have been clear with China that we, we, we believe any invasion of Taiwan, any threats against Taiwan are a threat to American national security and will respond as such. We should have also been clear that American politicians travel wherever they want to go, whenever they want to go, and they don't stand by to threats by the Chinese Communist Party or the like, and that Nancy Pelosi was going to go, that she had the full backing of the White House, and that China was going to threaten her, they'd be threatening the United States. We didn't make any of that clear, unfortunately. We haven't even done that yet to date, and that's the real problem here, is that the Chinese don't know whether we're serious, and when, when they're not sure, that can result in bad outcomes, even if it's just a strategic miscalculation by them. All right, Jamil Jaffer, we certainly appreciate your insight and your time. We'll keep tracking this, and we know you will, too. Thank you.